The internet offers a plethora of formal and informal online learning resources available for free or at significantly lower cost compared to traditional offline educational opportunities, and has therefore lowered barriers to entry for people seeking educational resources. Massive open online courses, video tutorials, how-to articles, and online discussion groups can help people gain new skills with the potential to improve their job prospects, social mobility, and personal welfare. No prior work to our knowledge has addressed this full ecosystem by looking at more than one subject or more than one resource at a time across all online learners. An important contribution to this work is that we consider the combination of subjects and resources, for example, an online university course for learning history or a YouTube video for learning math that may generalize to many learners. In this work, we explore three research questions. What do people learn about online? How do people learn online? In other words, what learning resources do they use? And what are the core online learning experiences? Which subject through what resource that are common across the majority of online learners? To answer these research questions, we conducted an online survey of 2,260 adults age 18 and over in the United States. To improve the generalizability of our findings, our survey sample was demographically balanced to match U.S. Census statistics on gender, age, and education. To understand respondents' online learning experiences, we asked respondents what subjects they had learned about online and what types of resources they used to learn about each of those subjects. A respondent who indicated that they used a particular type of resource to learn about a particular subject had what we define as an online learning experience. To understand what subjects people learned online, we asked, which of the following topics have you tried to learn through online resources? This was followed by 19 subjects, the option of other and specifying something else, and none of the above. Subjects range from traditional academic subjects like history, math, and science, to general welfare and lifestyle subjects like do-it-yourself, travel, geography, personal health, healthcare, makeup and fashion, online safety, security, and privacy. Overall, respondents could report up to 190 possible online learning experiences. Pairs of subjects and resources such as learning math on YouTube, on YouTube or learning languages using an interactive tutorial. Since we asked about how respondents learned up to 19 subjects using up to 10 online learning resources. Overall, we found that 93% of our 2,260 survey respondents reported learning something online. We examined how many of our respondents chose to learn about these subjects. The only subject that more than half of our respondents reported learning about was do-it-yourself, which includes around-the-house activities such as cooking, baking, and arts and crafts. After DIY, the next most popular subjects were those about general welfare and lifestyle, physical health, personal physical fitness, travel and geography, and history. Respondents used at least one and at most 10 resources to learn about a particular subject. Of the 2,094 respondents to our survey who indicated that they at least used one resource, the vast majority relied on YouTube to learn online. Additionally, 77% used Wikipedia or informational articles respectively, to learn online. Over half of respondents reported learning online using how-to guides or by using question-asking forums, either asking questions or reading answers to others' questions. The least used online reading source resources, but still used by at least half of respondents, were academic-style resources, interactive tutorials, course materials, and practice exam websites. Further, 55% of respondents reported enrolling in a formal online course to learn something. Of these respondents, 40% reported having taken an online course from a local university, while 22% said that they had taken an online course at a university that was not local to them. As noted earlier, YouTube is the most popular resource for online learning. Perhaps unsurprisingly, informational articles on Wikipedia are the next most popular types of online learning resources, considering that text-based articles and web pages were the first and most fundamental parts of the internet. The four core resources we identified, YouTube, informational articles, Wikipedia, and how-to guides, are built around three legacy internet technologies, video, static text, and wikis. YouTube was founded over 15 years ago. Static text websites have been around since the beginning of the internet, 
And we use our technology that is over 25 years old. We hypothesize that the popularity of these legacy resources has four potential causes. First, adult learners may find it easiest or prefer to learn through informal video media and in informational articles, thus leveraging these resources the most. Second, due in part to having a long period of time over which to develop content, these popular learning resources are able to supply a high volume of content across many topics. For example, YouTube is the leading video platform, in, both in terms of hours of content and revenue. Therefore, it may be easiest for learners to find, some, to find learning content on YouTube, thus leading them to learn using video media. Third, over extended use, internet users may have developed familiarity with learning from video and informational article style content. This familiarity may lead them to continue to turn to learning modes which they are comfortable receiving content instead of exploring newer learning technologies, such as interactive tutorials, MOOCs, and question and answer forums, which may also have a lower supply of content. Finally, the popularity of these resources may create a cyclical effect. Because these resources are more popular and offer more supply, they are easier to find in search results, and thus learners are more likely to turn to them. These findings raise important questions for future work to investigate regarding whether these resources actually best meet learner needs or are merely used out of convenience due to supply, familiarity, and ease of access. In our paper, we delve deeper into how our findings support or refute each of these potential drivers behind learners' choice of online learning resources. These issues of supply may relate to the ease with which resource creators can develop new content. The relatively low popularity of new learning resources, for example, MOOCs intera and, and, and interactive tutorials, highlights the absence of the diffusion of innovations we might expect given years of interest in new types of educational media and interactive online learning technologies. This absence may be related to the ease with which these resources can be created. Phones, tablets, and personal computers are now often embedded with more than one camera, making the creation of educational videos easier than ever before, and the tools for publishing text-based articles are just as widespread. However, relatively less robust and cost-effective support is available for the creation of newer resources. For example, many universities had to scale up production studios in which to create massively open online courses, purchasing expensive equipment out of reach for many of the learning content creators who utilize YouTube. Similarly, many interactive tutorials involve the creation of new software products, requiring significant grant funding and time investment for development. Thus, future work on the democratization of online education may wish to consider how to democratize the creation of content in an effort to improve the learning content available for consumption.